welcome. You know, I just wanted to say thank you for you guys coming out. I mean, it's not a great night to be out running around Mesquite, but uh, I don't know, except for Robert over here. He enjoys being out in the rain, right? That's what I thought. <laughs> but we appreciate it. We, you know, this is this is obviously a big, uh, big, big thing for our city, and and uh, lots of changes. And and we, you know, we want uh, our citizens' input. We want you guys to take a look at what we've started, and it's just simply a, a starting point. I've, I've tried to make that fairly clear all the way through that um, uh, this particular illustrative map, I practice that a lot, illustrative map is, is just that at this point. At some point, it'll, a map will become the official map, but uh, right now, I just want to let everyone know, um, we have, I think all of our council, most of our council, we have a mayor pro tem, Dan Aleman, our Deputy Mayor Pro Tem, Dandy Burroughs, Councilman Archer, Councilman Noche, Councilman Gasper, Councilman Miklos, and he, I think he checked that he was coming, so I talked to him yesterday in the weather, and he drives 635 a lot, so he may be on his way here. So we appreciate all of you coming, and our board trustee, Robert, thank you for being here. There's not a lot of ground rules tonight. Um, we've had the opportunity to go through this a time or two. We are videotaping, and any input you, that you would want to give us, know that it'll be recorded so people can watch this later. There's a microphone right there, and at a point in time when you can come up and speak, we'd ask you to just to use the microphone. Um, and with that, I would introduce to you Gunnar Sequist, who's a partner with Bigger Staff, Heath Delgado Acosta. Does that sound right? That's it. And uh, Gunnar, it's going to be your show tonight, so I'll let you run the show, and I'll come up at the close. Thank, Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see you. <clears throat> well, good evening, council members, uh, members of the public. Uh, as the mayor said, my name is Gunnar Sequist, and uh, I am with the law firm of Bickerstaff, Heath, Delgado, and Acosta. Uh, one of our specialties is helping uh, cities, such as the cities of, of Mesquite, go through the redistricting process. And it is certainly my privilege to, be, to have been able to help uh, the city thus far along and to be here with you all tonight. <clears throat> a brief uh, presentation and then we will get into the, the public comment. Um, really the purpose of this meeting tonight is for those of you who haven't heard my spiel already, and I know a couple of you have been at some of the earlier meetings and have, uh, I, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on the process talk a little bit about what um, our firm looks at uh, and guides the city in in terms of the redistricting process, um, some of the, the considerations that we take into account when we actually redraw these maps. And um, at that point, we're going to open it up, uh, get some input from the public. We, we do have, I hope everybody's had an opportunity to grab on their way in, copies of the illustrative plan. Uh, as the mayor said, that is just an example plan. Uh, it, it gives us a starting place to solicit public input and comment and for the city council uh, to work on going forward to make sure uh, it arrives at the best possible plan for the city of Mesquite. <clears throat> and then at the end, I'll talk a little bit about the next steps for the redistricting project uh, process and, and when we'll actually get to the adoption of a final map. So what's this process all about? Um, on the screen here is the map of the, the current districts uh, as, as you all know them. Uh, of course, what we have here is four residential districts. Two uh, council members have been elected at large, and then, of course, the mayor has been elected at large. Um, when we talk about residential districts, what that means is, is that the candidate running for council uh, must reside in the shaded area or in the numbered district. However, since it's at currently or, or previously was an at-large system, uh, the whole city gets to vote on each one of the places. When we move as a result of the city's, uh, the citizens of Mesquite passing a, an amendment to the city charter, moving from the at-large system to single member districts, um, what we will be moving to is six single member districts. So we have to fill the same area that's currently covered by the four residential districts, obviously with six districts, and then once those districts are in place, uh, not only will the candidate uh, that runs for each of those districts reside in the district, but the voters will only vote for the candidate in the district in which they reside as well. Um, as a result, <clears throat> currently the districts, the residential districts, each district covers around 35,000 people. 
obviously when we go to six uh, districts, uh, each district is going to be a little bit smaller in the number of people. This is a general um, timeline that we've been working with with the city. Uh, the important dates on this uh, timeline for the purposes of this meeting tonight, um, as you see here, we started back uh, at the end of the summer, early September, working with the council to, to develop the illustrative plan uh, that you have uh, copies of here tonight and that we'll be receiving input on tonight. Uh, we're now in the public process, the public comment period here. Obviously, we're having this meeting uh, tonight. We're also going to have another public input meeting on Thursday night, same time, 7 p.m. Um, and then after that, we're gonna come back to the council at the November 5th meeting. Uh, at which point the council will be able to consider all the public input. Our firm will provide a report to the council as well, uh, summarizing some of that public input, uh, and then have any, an opportunity to make any necessary changes. The current plan is to then go ahead and have a final plan adopted by November 19th. But I will tell you that there is some room in the schedule if, if there's further revisions that need to be made or further input uh, or discussion that needs to be had, then we have additional room. The only requirement under the charter is that we must have the new districts in place by the end of the year. So what do we look at when we are uh, drawing single member districts? Uh, specifically, we try to, where possible, um, draw districts based on easily identifiable geographic boundaries. If you look at our maps uh, out here, uh, we try to follow established major roadways. We will, on occasion, use major um, geographic landmarks such as creeks, um, other boundaries of that nature. That way we have an established uh, met means of drawing, a boundary, of drawing a district that follows established boundaries. We also try to follow existing voting precincts. Uh, the, the purpose of that is we try to have it to where our districts do not split voting precincts. That is, where everybody in a, in a particular voting precinct will be voting in the same district. That doesn't mean that everybody in one district will go to one precinct. There can be multiple precincts per district. But what we try to avoid when possible, and it's not always possible, is having one precinct covering more than one district. At the, the, uh, there's a constitutional uh, one person, one vote requirement. And so we try to make sure that our districts, when they are drawn, uh, are relatively equal in total population. Um, the numbers that we use to look at that uh, are the 2010 federal census data. In 2020, we'll get new data, and we'll have to check it again at that point to make sure everything is still in balance. Uh, if it's not, we'll make minor corrections. But based on what we have observed in terms of the growth in the city of Mesquite, we think the 2010 data is still fairly accurate. Ultimately, uh, in, in looking at the districts, the, what the courts have told us is that the, the deviation between the, the um, highest district and the lowest number of district, uh, the district with the highest population and the district with the lowest number of people should not exceed a 10% deviation between those two. And in the illustrative plan that we have worked on and that you have here tonight uh, conforms to that requirement. So when we draw the map, we try to de design compact and contiguous districts. That is, we try to have them be um, a reasonable shape. We don't like a lot of stringy lines going out. Uh, we don't like breaks in districts. We want to keep everything in a district to be um, close together and not too unusually shaped. Um, we have to, in analysis, one of our jobs is to make sure that the districts that are being drawn and considered conform to the Federal Voting Rights Act. The Voting Rights Act is a federal statute that is intended to protect um, minority par participation in elections. And so in drawing districts, we can't draw districts in a way that tends to dilute uh, minority voting power. Uh, essentially what that means is we have to avoid uh, fragmenting any geographically compact minority communities or overly packing minority populations into a particular district. So in terms of <clears throat> the districts that we have drawn, we feel like we have done that. Um, th that's really as far as we consider race or ethnicity in terms of drawing districts. We, we look at it just sufficient to make sure that um, we are complying with federal law and beyond that the districts are race and ethnicity neutral. This is the copy of the illustrative plan. This is based on uh, an initial example plan that we put together, our firm put together. Uh, the, the council at a drawing session earlier in September had an opportunity to make some, some adjustments to that. Those adjustments were primarily to preserve 
the character of neighborhoods to make sure um, the neighborhoods that identify together and have common interests weren't split apart or were kept together uh, as much as possible, which is another uh, one of our goals in redistricting. And so this is the plan um, that is presented tonight as an, an example, as the mayor um, explained rightly. It's not by any stretch a final map. Um, ultimately, this map can change depending on uh, input from the public or you know, uh, goals that the council has in terms of a final map. Uh, but this is the map that we're going to be asking for public input on tonight. Uh, we also have uh, each of the individual districts uh, blown up here. Hopefully you got a chance to see those as you came in the room this evening. This is an example of the demographic data. Well, that's not an example. This is the demographic data that, uh, that matches the illustrative plan. But this is an example of what we look at to make sure, um, one, that our populations are in balance, and two, that we are not fragmenting uh, or uh, packing any districts. And so what we have here are uh, well-distributed populations uh, and districts in the total population, which fall within that 10% um, deviation that I had talked about earlier. In addition to any public comment that we received tonight, uh, the council has invited uh, those who, who wish to do so to submit their own plans for consideration. Um, but the council has adopted some guidelines in terms of um, requirements for plans that are submitted by citizens. These are important just so that all of the plans that are submitted are an apples to apples comparison that we can compare between the illustrative plan and other plans and that they have certain features in common um, which make it manageable and feasible for for the council to consider them. The first is obviously they have to be in writing and legible. Um, we ask that any plans submitted show demographic and racial categories based upon 2010 census data, the data is available through the census. Um, that helps us do our analysis just as we did on this plan on any plans that are submitted. We ask that plans uh, redistrict the entire city of Mesquite. Uh, sometimes people want to draw a plan just to kind of redraw a particular district, but unless you have the entire map and the whole uh, see how all the pieces fit together, it's very difficult to actually compare it to what the illustrative plan or other plans would be if a map doesn't redistrict the entire city. Uh, plans should conform to the criteria we talked about before the, uh, in terms of being contiguous um, and, and compact geographically, um, compliance with the Voting Rights Act, balancing of population. Um, plans submitted by citizens need to meet those as well. Uh, we ask that any comments or proposed plans that are submitted, um, that they identify the person uh, submitting them by name and address, uh, phone number, and if possible, an email address. That helps us get back to you uh, with any need for clarification and also just to keep a record of who is submitting plans for consideration. And finally, um, we ask that uh, the comments and plans be submitted to the city secretary's office. Uh, if you have any questions about that, my understanding is that they're able, you can give them a call to get information. Uh, also, uh, all of this information, you don't have to memorize it, is available on the city's website. The city has created a, a redistricting website, which has a lot of great information. In addition to this criteria, it also has some videos and other information uh, about this process, which are very informative and certainly worth taking a look at. All right. Um, I've kind of talked about where we go from here. So at this point, uh, I think what we can open it up for public comment. Uh, if we have any citizens who've come tonight who would like to comment on the illustrative plan, I'm going to put it back up. And what I, you know, obviously you're welcome to submit any comment um, that you would like to. One of the things that is helpful for us is if you see, for example, somewhere in the map where you think a neighborhood that, that does share a community of interest or a common identity has been split, that's helpful for us to know if there are per particular areas um, that you think should be included together but are not here. That's helpful for us to know. And then any other concerns uh, that you may have or if you think uh, any other things that you think are very good about this plan, we'd like to hear that as well. So at this time, I will open it up for any public comment. We have a microphone station here uh, in the audience, and I think that's where we're going to be taking public comment. So if you would, when you come up, like we're conducting this, much like we do a council meeting, if you can give us your name and address uh, for our records, but also for the recording. And um, if you have questions of any of us, especially if 
Gunner and these guys, then please feel free. Go ahead. My name is Brad Collier. I live at 4531 Marigold Trail right here in this neighborhood. Um, my, my first question that I'd like for Gunner to respond to is uh, regarding the analysis that you, that you worked on of comparing our current status, uh, our current um, demographics to what was presented in 2010. Um, my limited understanding of Mesquite is that most of our districts are pretty constrained in how they're going to be growing or receiving additional citizenry, uh, except for six, which probably has been seeing growth since 2010 and undoubtedly is going to see it from this point to the next census, but also the census beyond, even beyond 2020, there are housing developments that might not have full capacity at 2020, but let's say 2023 instead how much is that going to push us out of whack um, by the time we get to the 2030 census? You can come on up. One thing I would mention, and I talked about this before, um, we as a council had looked at these districts off and on over the last 30 or 40 years. And there have been times that we've drawn and looked at to balance out just on representation. So. I know that there will be opportunities, to, to your point, that uh, a lot of growth out on I-20. We know there's many, many houses going in out there. So I'll let Gunnar kind of talk to how that happens. Sure. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, Mesquite is fairly well landlocked. So in terms of opportunity for growth, I think you've identified pretty much the geographical location where that can take place. Uh, in looking at you know, we looked at not only the 2010 census data, but some ACS community survey data that have come out uh, in the past five years. And there is some moderate growth, but it's not, uh, it, isn't, it isn't a significant enough population growth that would throw what we're looking at here out of whack. Now, if we look, um, and my guess is for the 2020 census, we probably would not be at that out of whack either. It, to the extent that down the road this area does you know, there is substantial development and there is a substantial population increase. Uh, you know, based on where you are located geographically here, I mean, most of these folks, you know, we're not able to move them, but what we can do is take some of the folks, you can, you'll, you'll see some adjustment around here uh, in order to rebalance the districts. And so at that time, you know, it, typically every time the new census comes out, we look at the new data and um, and, and make sure, one, that the population balances just from an overall number standpoint so that we're in, within the 10 percent deviation. And then we also look at what the specific demographic growth is and see if we need to make any changes based on the particular demographic segments in an area where the growth has occurred. And so all of that gets rebalanced each time the census is redone. Does that answer your question? Great. Don't run off. I'm going to sit over here. Okay. Yeah, stay closer. So one of the triggers, I think, to your point is if 10,000 homes are built out here in five years and there's 30,000 people living out there, it's almost an entire district, or it would be more than a district. And so I think it, it's uh, incumbent upon the councils to be watching our population, basically. And so that we had done it about three years, and it really just depends on the, that growth and how, because we want to keep it balanced, and I guess Actually, we, we, we would have to try to do that ever so many years uh, based on, I know, probably federal law and state law both, I would imagine. Well, that's right. And I'll make one other point. Um, we, under the law, we do it every 10 years when the decennial census comes out. But we also have clients that we have done um, where, for example, if, they'll, you know, if they know they're doing an annexation of a large area where you know immediately there's going to be a large population growth, or if you just observe a significant population growth, there are ways of estimating that population even before the census comes out. So if there was a situation where um, there was a, lot, a significant amount of development and, pop and, and perceived or suspected population increase that occurred at the same time, that's certainly something that the city could come to us about, and we could do an analysis of that even outside of the decennial census. So, so there are ways of estimating that, um, but until you actually see that development, I would say that's probably not necessary. Anyone else wanted to share or question? It's a lot of information. It comes at us, and I know that a lot of you have seen this for the first time tonight, but um, about process or what we've done so far. Do you have, go ahead, yeah, come so. on. The, the other question that I have is more for the council members and your vision of 
of how this new districting representation works. I mean, there are, there are some city services that, that are regional <laughs> with a, or, or district within our city, let's say maybe like the recreation centers, certainly the fire stations, um, um, but you have, you, I, I suspect you have a better idea of where certain things are. I know where my local fire station is. I know where my local <laughs> library is. You know, I know where the North Branch of the library is. Um, I see, for example, this neighborhood is not within the highway boundaries. And so, like, the, the fire station that's across the street is actually in a different district right. uh, from, from my house. Um, but what, what impact does this districting have on the way that we will be interacting with our council members um, and the way that they will be interacting with each other? You know, that's a great question. One of the plans, and I apologize, council, because I haven't said this to you, but when we get through with your questions, we were going to allow the council to come up and each one share. And if, if that's all right with you, if when we get to the end, I can let them respond if that's fine. Um, you know, it's, it's a different way of voting for, for all of for all of the council members, without a doubt. Um, uh, citywide races, even in a town this size, can, can be expensive and time consuming and et cetera. So representation for one, uh, just in general, will be that uh, only the people that are registered to vote and choose to vote in each of these colored areas or whatever they wind up being will be voting for that one person. Um, in terms of how they would interact, they, they can all uh, think how it's gonna be, but I will tell you, uh, my opinion is much more personal. And we have a lot of men in this room that are very personal now, that all of them are, that get out. But uh, I think when you have a geographical district that's smaller and, you, you know, you'll, it's, it's the cooperation, that's something we'll have to look at when it's all said and done in about a year from now uh, and how it works together. My hope, obviously, is that we uh, most of the time all work together. But um, I think this is new for Mesquite. And... Um, I, I, I always use road, road analogies. Uh, if you're building a road that runs across three districts, it's going to be difficult to have a six lane that goes down to a two lane that goes to a four lane through the districts because we need that road to be contiguous. And so, we, you know, and I, that's a bad example because there's some of that now probably. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll let the council members and they'll have an opportunity. So it's a great question and I'll give them something to share. Any other questions? Any other comments? You know, this is um, this is new to a lot of us, and I guess new to all of us, quite frankly, for going through and, and how this plays out. Um, it'll be exciting to to see next fall. I think we'll have a couple of people running for office, so I think it'll be a fun time. Anybody else? I don't want to. I want to allow the council to come up and speak, but. I certainly, if you have anything you'd like to share, I'd sort of encourage you to do that. Okay. Well, I will ask the council, any of you that want to come up, Mr. Councilman Miklos, you're welcome to come forward. Just did it in numerical order, right? <laughs> well, I was going to let the deputy mayor and the mayor pro tem be the last two before us to close this. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You know, you asked the question, and, and I, I missed your name. Brad. Brad? Why don't you come up to the microphone, Brad? So let me turn it around to you um, with this process, because, you know, when I come here, I'm interested in what you and other citizens think. I want to know what y'all think, what you're looking for, hoping for, don't want in this process going forward. So. When you ask that question, I'll turn that back to you and let's see what your answer is. I'm interested. Um, I think it's, it's my understanding that a lot of people across the U.S. are inclined toward this idea of being able to select within a district for a closer feeling of, uh, of representation of their own voice. Um, and so one of my concerns in the, in the districting is specifically, so, no, and it's not only how the numbers work out, but um, just that the, the, the various populations, demographical populations within Mesquite will, will, will not feel, be convinced that they are not disenfranchised by, what it, by, by even the, the choice that we ourselves made 
uh, in this last election cycle. That's one of my primary concerns, is that we, we all feel empowered toward the poll bo polling box um, by this change that's happening. Uh, and, and that we all, both citizens and council, know how to best use this system that we're transitioning to. And, and, and so I appreciate that. So those are your concerns. Do you, at this point, have any suggested solutions or views as how to solve those issues, if they are problems, what do you think would be the solutions to those issues? Um, I feel like the um, some kind some kind of resource for for knowing knowing how things work well, best practices throughout the country. Where where has this kind of setup worked well? Um, what reading might we citizens be pointed to to know how to be be effective within this type of setup? Are, are, you, are um, you including, for example, uh, more lines of communication, more ability to gather, gain access to uh, data, resource, knowledge, and individuals who can help with issues or problems? Just a, a, a resource that's open, that's that the citizens are pointed to saying, we're, we're changing, th this changes some things, these are the things that are, that are, that are different, these are the things that, that you can now do that maybe you weren't able to do earlier or the way that, the way that our, the things that our city can do now that it couldn't do and just having, having access to resources and, and, um, and examples of where this has been applied, and 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 specifically those places where people are happy that it's been that it's occurred, or that it worked out, yes. and that there's a high uh, level of satisfaction. Yes. Thank you, Brad. So I'll turn it to anybody else who wants to go through that. If there's anyone who wants to go through that specifically, what would you like to see this process, citizenry? What would you like to see this process become, turn out to be, not be? Does anybody else want to jump in on that? No? All right. I, I, the, the, for me, attending these meetings is, is not for me to go on and on about my opinion, but to hear your opinion. So Brad, I appreciate that. Uh, this allows, I think, all of us to hear exactly what you're saying and, and other citizens as well. So uh, um, uh, because the smartest man in the world isn't as smart as two or three or four other people. And there's a lot of things that other people have thought of that I've never thought of and the rest of us haven't thought of. Uh, so I encourage all of our citizens to get out and uh, contribute. And so I appreciate that. And that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Collier, thank you very much for your comments. I appreciate that. I also appreciate your service to the Mesquite Symphony Orchestra uh, over time and, and your dedication to the arts here in the city. So appreciate that. Um, and and I, I, in terms of a resource to look to, I think really the, the answer to that is to look within yourself because what you have now is a system that is gonna be different and it's gonna require engagement and it's a system that could be very dangerous. George Washington, in, in his farewell address, talked about factionalism. And, and he was actually referring more to partisanship. But that's kind of what we have here, is that we're transitioning to a system that could lead to trading between council members uh, over projects, um, that could lead to uh, people just looking out for their particular district. We're lo looking at a system or transitioning to a system that could lead to council members appointing from their specific districts to committees and having a specific appointee from each committee uh, and, and only representing that particular district. And what it's going to take is it's going to take engagement from the citizenry and the watchful eye over what is the council doing to make sure that those 
actions are in the best interest of the entire city. And that is one of my biggest concerns about this, um, this transition and ultimately what this could look like in the future uh, in terms of single member districts. Because you don't have to go very far from here to see a system in which that is the way it operates. Dallas has a system in which if the council person is not in favor of a particular project in their district, it doesn't go forward. So one council person could block a project that could advance the city. And, and so um, in terms of a resource, I would really encourage you to focus on empowering voters, engaging voters, and making sure that we continue to have a vibrant electorate that maintains a council that has a vision for the entire city and not just the particular factions they represent. Um, you know, I'll just share a couple of thoughts with, with everybody. Uh, I'm pretty hopeful uh, about this process. Uh, in my opinion, we, we have some things that are a little bit uh, struggling about our current civic democracy. I think our voter turnout uh, is not where we'd want it to be. I think the uh, pools in which our candidates come from is not what I personally would like to see it from, whether that's diversity of uh, ideology, diversity of faith communities, diversity of ethnicity, diversity of just life experiences in general. Uh, I don't think our council has been reflective of that, not just currently, but generationally. Um, and so I think this is one way in which we can build in some geographic checks and balances to ensure that uh, that happens. Because right now what we do is, and I think all the concerns you've heard are legitimate, but I think what we do right now is when we appoint somebody from our board, they come from our social network. They come from uh, our, our, our industry or our faith community. Uh, they come from people we know. Uh, and right now, we have a current council that is uh, agglomerated around New Market. And that's not diversity of geography, and I don't think we have diversity of thought. Oftentimes, I think we have seen not just this council, but previous councils have factionalism in our current <laughs> paradigm. And so I think that this is a, a ability to have some solutions. Uh, I'm hopeful uh, about that. But I do think, to Mr. Noche's point, uh, it, it does mean that we're going to have to go out and uh, ensure that the civic democracy is healthy, uh, whether that means recruiting candidates, whether that means uh, training up our neighborhood watch leaders to feel empowered to run, uh, whether that means looking elsewhere in, in different ethnicities, different genders than we currently have. Uh, and so I think this will be a lot of good if we make it. I think that's true of any democracy. Your outputs equal what your inputs are. Uh, and so what I think this gets us is some current benefits of cutting up the current electorate so that they can't produce citywide candidates for every race that they touch. The same voters right now, for the way we've done our elections, they've produced the same kind of candidates because it's the same voters voting in each one of the elections. Even though we have geographic disparity of where our homes are, I'm not sure that the electorate being the same in each spot has necessarily produced diversity of opinions. And to me, that's a lot more scary than uh, the idea that we might one day have people who want to see projects in their district go a certain way. Now, what this does not do is get rid of the idea that we have four votes that are required to create policy. And so there will still be the necessity of compromise, the necessity in which we all have to come together and have a grand citywide vision, hopefully regional, state, national vision, uh, to make Mesquite the city we want it to be. But again, it's, it's what we put into it. And in my opinion, shaking up our current status quo uh, will be healthy, uh, and hopefully we see some diversity uh, in, in our council in a variety of ways. I uh, also, uh, I guess I'm a lot more hopeful uh, as we go forward. 
uh, and I'll just kind of go uh, to my experience for the last four and a half years, uh, my district has a small handful of neighborhoods that are probably anywhere from 20 to about 25 years old, but the majority of the neighborhoods in my district are oftentimes 45, 50, 60 years old. And so, and, and there's about four uh, that are very, very large, populated and geographically spread out uh, neighborhoods. And not to mention aspects of my district that are commercial areas. Um, so there is a, a, I often have felt like I've sort of been chasing my tail uh, over the last few years because you know, I, I would do what I call neighborhood improvement surges uh, in at least four different major large neighborhoods like Northridge and um, Bellevue Heights, Rollwood Hills, and uh, that's in Roberts District now, but it used to be in mine, and uh, Edgemont Park. And, and I would do about four to five months in each neighborhood, literally uh, trying to engage uh, residents by going door to door, uh, getting folks to uh, in, involve themselves as Crime Watch and trying to recruit Crime Watch leaders. Uh, and it is a vast, vast work. And I could have spent a year in each of those neighborhoods and still not got near what I wanted to get done because there's so much to do to revive and rejuvenate an older suburb as well as, as you've heard, engage, 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 because we cannot move forward if, if it's always just a small number of people who elect us and who give input. As Mr. Miklo said, we need lots of ideas and input from a lot more people as we go forward. And so uh, from accountability standpoint, there's just so much to do in each area. And so I would say that <clears throat> from my experience, being able to have those districts shrunk down a little bit or they're a little bit more manageable so that council member can more effectively get to all their neighborhoods because again there'd be times where i'll be putting a lot of focus on one area for a few months but i still got to make sure that i spend time in all the other areas too to not neglect them um, it makes a difference i found to a lot of residents to know that their their elected officials are out in their areas uh, touching them knowing what's going on knowing what their concerns are and frankly we really really truly can't responsibly make good decisions about budgeting and other policy matters if we don't really know what our people are going through and thinking and what their concerns are. If we just meet a couple of nights a month and listen to what staff tells us, although they're awesome, that's just not enough. The people want to have their elected leaders out among them. And so I believe that now shrinking this down where we all have six districts instead of four, and that, frankly, you know, for years we've had two at large positions where there's really no expectation of those positions. Now there'll be expectation of every single one of us. I hope in my vision that each of us would be having regular town hall meetings in our districts and neighborhood meetings and uh, recruiting leaders, um, being accessible, have meeting your councilman events all throughout uh, and getting things done and bringing those things, those needs and concerns back to the whole council where we not necessarily horse trade but we all uh, work with each other. Uh, and I believe in terms of unity, if, if it's a priority for us to help each other, look out for each other, we'll be out there helping each other in our districts like we already do right now, but expand that to we work as one team, but also out helping our particular districts. So I think it'll be a win-win for us. I think it'll get elected officials much closer to the people, and that's always a win-win for democracy. So those are my thoughts. I have to agree with uh, Councilman Archer on part of that, that, you know, by bringing the, the city down into six districts, it is going to make it a little easier to take care of each district. Uh, I would hope that anybody that ran for council in any of these districts, that you wouldn't take care of just your district. The whole city is your district. It doesn't matter what district that you run for, you should be thinking about the whole city because anything that you do in your district is going to take budgeted money or anything and it's going to affect the whole city. So I really hope that whoever, you know, runs and wins in each district, we've all got to work together. And I think anything that we do has got to be thought about as a whole city because any decision you make is going to be for the whole city. Um, it's going to be different, but I do think that, you know, 
when you get ready to run for an election, you're not going to have to cover the whole city because you're going to be doing just your one section because that's the only people that are going to be voting for you. Uh, it's going to, but even if that's the case, those those people, I still, in my thought, that I would want any citizen from anywhere in the city to still be able to call you, you know, to try to get something done. Uh, I don't think any councilman should be, you know, this is my only district and this is my only people that I'm working for. I think that has to go out the window. Uh, and you have to know that anybody in the city, no matter what district you're representing, can call you and you should take care of their problems just like you would anybody in your district. Uh, what's neat about going up last is you get to hear everybody else, and I've been listening, and I've heard four different words, engage, vision, unity, diversity, and, uh, and, and I like that. We, we need more diversity in our leadership. We got to go after that. Uh, Councilman Noche talking about engage, and you heard that again. We've got to engage. We've had low voting turnout, and that's got to change. We need to go after our areas and bring more people out. We need to continue with a vision for the entire city. We've got to do that. And, and in that, having, having that single vision where we're not, like, like what you're saying, that we're not competing with each other, that it's my district, that we get rid of that, but that we say, we're in this for all of us together. When we go after another fire station, that we're going to need down I-20, it's got to be all of us together. We got to go after those decisions. New developments that come in, they're going to be talking to all of us. We have four districts right now. We're going to six, but these developments, these new businesses, they're going to be coming to different ones, talking to different ones, and we need to, to group together for the betterment of our city. So yes, we do. We've got our work cut out for us. It's new territory. It's single member districts. Uh, it'll be districts that we're working. We have opportunities to really go after a lot more people and say, come on board. Come on and get involved with all of us together. Let's work together for the betterment of our city. So uh, I am hopeful. I am hopeful, but at the same time, I know we need to be cautious. And we don't need to allow certain things coming in where it divides us, splits us up, that type of thing. So we need to use wisdom. And, uh, and just ask God to help us with that godly wisdom that we can go after doing things for the future of our city. So, thank you. You know, I've heard some great things tonight. Anything spur anybody that want to, want to make any more comments or I'll pick on Robert, he lets me, he'd be glad to ask you some more questions. No. I think that's great, Robert, thank you for doing that. Um, you know, Brad, I, don't, I know we weren't picking on you, and uh, but you, you spoke, so we got, you know, and we appreciate it very much because this is what we need. Uh, you know, it's fascinating. We, we talk about, we talk about, we talk about diversity, and it's absolutely true, 100%. I was at a meeting a while back, and there were some people saying we need more XYZ, and my comment was, I agree 100%. But, and I think Mr. Casper said it. It may t I said that night, we can't drag people into the city secretary's office to make them file, but I think that Mr. Casper is on point. We've got to go out and encourage those people. We've got to go out, and you guys need to help us go out and encourage people. I was telling these ladies that come all the time, that there's three candidates right there, just like that. We got them ready to go. Um, you know, one of the things that's kind of exciting is that um, in this room, we have six people that only represent four of these new six districts. We know there's two districts on here that will have representation that's not sitting in this room. Um, we have an, another council member that uh, is terming off with our new uh, term limits. So we know that's three people. Change, change is on the way, so it's kind of neat. Um, anything else, Gunner, that you need? That's it. That's it, <laughs> that's a wrap. Going, going, gone. Thursday night, Rutherford, if you want to come out and do this again, uh, 7 o'clock, 900 Rutherford Drive, South Mesquite. Invite your friends. We'll fill the room up.
Thank you all for being here.